three of the people who made this film. Tamara Jane is the writer and director. Yeah. Catherine Hahn yeah. and Katie yeah. Dyer. So I, I'd like to plunge straight into the, the topic of this and end by saying I gather that you decided, Tamara, to write this when we came out of personal experience. Yeah, I did. I did have um, my own uh, fertility saga with my husband, um, but it wasn't my immediate <laughs> idea in the throes of our thing. I, you know, I had no idea that there was a movie involved in it at the time. It was just gruesome and horrible. And, um, uh, and when I actually, when I was going through a lot of it, I had a very close girlfriend who's a documentary filmmaker and a uh, confidant. And when I was going through this stuff and we would talk on the phone and I would um, you know, tell her what was going on in my life, she said, you, know, you should write some of this stuff down. It's really good material. And I said, I would never write. <laughs> this is a movie and this is hideous. So, um, and then look what happened. Well, so, I'm interested at what, at what point did it happen? <laughs> yeah, what point did you feel, okay, A, I can deal with this and B, it must be a movie. I don't think we can do anything about the feedback we seem to have. Yeah, it does sound kind of weird with like a double kind yeah, of kind of Do we sound echoey to you? No. Okay, so that's all right. So we'll just kind of. Um, uh, well, I was very interested in writing about a marriage. Um, and, you know, and as time went on, I started noticing that a lot of people that I know were going through fertility stuff. And it might have had to do with my um, unique group of friends who were uh, people that didn't have normal lives and delayed adulthood in a certain sort of way or uh, because they were you know, freelance type people that never had, you know, health insurance or um, writers, you know, uh, people like that. <laughs> and so I did look around at some point and notice that I wasn't the only one who was struggling with this. And um, that helped inform the idea. And, um, and realizing that it was a very interesting way in which to examine a marriage. I, I always think the movie, although it deals in the terrain of a story about infertility, I actually think it's a movie about a marriage. Um, and, uh, and you know, there's a whole tradition of stories that are about infertile couples, from the Bible to Greek mythology. Um, this was all helping justify this movie in my mind. And, you know, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, which was one of my favorite movies, and I don't, I mean, uh, plays, movies, all of it. So, um, I don't know, it held, I just felt like it was a, a, a great lens to, to study, um, you know, the way unmarriage navigates, you know, the trials and tribulations of. Absolutely, yeah. So, so Catherine, how did you react when you, when you saw the script for the first time? What, what, was your, what were your thoughts about playing this character? Oh, I mean, <clears throat> Uh, you know, I first read it as such a gorgeous, specific piece of writing. I loved the part of Rachel. I, I just thought the script was so funny and moving, and uh, and the and just the specific this couple. I just felt that beating heart between them. And like Tamara said, it's like, as I was reading it, you, you forget about the baby. <laughs> like you never actually see that baby. It was hard for me to ever picture them holding that baby almost. Like I never saw a crib in my mind. I never pictured that. It was just this quest. Um, and that made me even sadder. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted, you know, I just wanted in in so badly. I flew myself to New York. Uh, JetBlue special to meet and have dinner with Tamara and her at her favorite Italian place uh, to have like a five o'clock dinner, just the two of us, and then we split a bottle of rosé. And I, and then, <laughs> and we had like basically a huge meat and cheese plate, if I remember this correctly. Right. And then, and then um, I, I was able to go, I had to do some ADR 
PR for another job I had, um, I had to go to her office. She let me have her office for a second so I could do my ADR into my phone. I, I looked around and I saw the mood boards that she had kind of put up for the movie already. I was like, oh, I kind of tried to leave my scent around the almost in any way I could because I wanted it so badly. I just kind of tried to like leave my juju in any way I could so she could kind of remember me. And then she put me in a cab back to LaGuardia so I could go back to LA. I, I just wanted it so, so badly. Um, we didn't even talk about the script or anything. I felt like we just sort of were in that sniffing around kind of sense each other on the dog theme. She's yeah, talking about like spraying the office. <laughs> I felt like our lunch was sort of just sniffing each other, and we didn't really talk about the script very much. Like, no, no just uh -huh. kind of like, we did. We did. It was a great animal. We did. I remember there was a knocking over of a glass. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of clutzy, like, we, yeah, we just we sniffed each other out for, for, a, yeah, for a meal. Like, I wanted it so badly. <laughs> so, I'm assuming, Katie, that you felt. Well, I um I had actually just gotten back from doing a play in London and uh, then got this call to audition for it the week I got back. So I had just gotten off the plane. I was just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna settle back at home, and uh, and then they sent me this script and I couldn't believe that I, it had gotten down the line through enough people that I was reading this and <laughs> that it was being sent to me as an option. Uh, I was like, well, they, they don't have someone who wants to do this part? Uh, this is the best thing I've read for a woman in her mid-20s ever, I think, as a role. I'm, are, you, are you sure that <laughs> Nobody has this job. Um, when in, she dumped like a bowl of berries onto the table and in front of me in her office. Food, it was just food. like a huge bowl of berries in front of me that we picked up and talked about women and, you know, what we were into. We did this and we sniffed for a while as well. Kaylee came to the rescue because we had a we had an actor drop out a couple of weeks before the film was shooting. And um, it was the, my casting director, Jeannie McCarthy, who is brilliant, and uh, auditioned like 100 people over the course of like 10 days. And we were, I mean, they were wonderful actors, but nobody was, right, right, and um, I just remember being really sick to my stomach and worried, and I said, isn't there like a theater actress under a rock somewhere? <laughs> isn't that like, I'm just some kid out there doing theater? And then um, Jeannie emailed me, she said, I found a theater actress under a rock, and, <laughs> and she had just come back from London, um, and she was in a Mark Rylance play, and um, she came in. Well, I think we're all glad she did. I am too. <laughs> 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 it's, it's interesting the number of times the food is being mentioned. Yeah. Um, and then there's the whole thing with Paul and you and dinner. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask And then we eat the entire movie. Yeah, I don't food. stop eating this whole movie. <laughs> all I'm doing is eating it. <laughs> I know there was a specific situation where we knew there wouldn't be and we didn't access to a great deal of rehearsal time. And to establish a relationship between Catherine and Paul Giamatti, who so that they had felt as if they were moving to the house of the night, you, you invited them to your apartment, was that the way? Well, I actually invited them to Paul's apartment, uh, because <laughs> Paul was um, single, and there was no kids around at that point. I mean, he's his son, but he wasn't there. Um, and uh, I kind of took over. I said, can I come, come to your apartment? It was a couple of weeks, it was a couple of months, I guess, before we shot. And she had just, she was, they had never met, um, and Catherine was doing bad mom press or something uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. she, and so she was in New York for one second, and Paul was about to go to Poland for a long time. And I wanted them to meet once, so 
it could be working in their subconscious, you know, that their parents at the time that we started um, our very brief rehearsal period felt they were, they had something between them uh, to recall. So um, I made a dinner at Paul's house. Um, no one was there. Someone let me in. Uh, then Paul arrived. Then Catherine arrived. And that was the meeting. I really remember standing in the kitchen and just kind of Hoping. Yeah, that there was like a frisson. She made yeah. this amazing, yeah. amazing uh, bolognese, I think. Ragu. Ragu. <laughs> Please excuse me. I um, kind of blew it. This is really good. She did not recipe. blow it. It was delish. <laughs> um, we had an yeah, it was an amazing meal. Uh, we could immediately couldn't stop talking, Paul and I. He had to kind of like drag us away from the dining room table to kind of like. Yeah, there's, 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 there's always that awkward thing when you sort of are socialized and really want to do the work and you're a director. And so we were all, you know, having dinner and then they were laughing and I think having wine and then somehow I slipped away. Yeah, I was like, oh, I guess we're switching in a director mode. That's what they said. Because I was suddenly like flipping through pages, you know, over there. Just, and they were like, oh shit, she's getting serious. Like, so I think like, they, they came up with read the script and, uh, and then you had us clean up. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the acting exercises was they had to do the dishes together because I thought that was a good uh, marriage acting exercise. It is an apartment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it was good. There's a lot of like steeping, yeah. it felt like. So, yeah. Yeah. And then we got to like go away. It was, it, was, it was brilliant, like the perfect way to meet because we didn't see each other again for a, a while. Right, and then you had a memory. Almost like I built took in. pictures of us that night. Yes, and I took pictures, just cell phone pictures. Oh, and I gave you the exercise of going on a donor egg website and picking a donor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where I took the picture of them because uh, they were close to each other on the couch. Mm -hmm. And I took the picture and I held it in my cell phone and I sent it to my producers and to Gene McCarthy. And I said, don't they look like a real couple? Like, not a movie couple, but like a real couple? Like real people? I was so excited. Kaylee, can I ask you from your point of view, what was it like actually performing with, with, with those two actors in this situation? It's a very interesting and unusual relationship you have with them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they had immediate chemistry and that was apparent. Um, but there wasn't a long period of time of, oh, I'm, I'm out of my depth because any of these people, the warmth is immediate. It was maybe 10 seconds until I was laughing along with them. And our first rehearsal, the three of us, was also in Paul's apartment. So we went back there. Yeah, and it was a very homey environment. And really, even though it was such a short rehearsal process, it was such an intimate rehearsal process. And then we were in that apartment for the first two and a half weeks of filming, basically just the three of us, mm -hmm. which forged that really tight right away. Sorry. Can you tell us a bit about the actual mechanics of shooting? It was a 30 day shoot. Um, did it go smoothly? Was it, uh... um, well, it, half, of the, like, half of the shooting days really took place inside that apartment. And that, that was very, uh, it wasn't half, I think it was 12. Um, but it was, that was a great like incubator for the, for the actor, for the three actors. And then I remember when we left, it was so confusing because suddenly there were other actors. <laughs> yeah, we were such a weird bubble inside that apartment. And it was kind of a great thing. Like our own little, I can remember, I was like, we're like our own little rat company. Yeah. In a womb, as it were. Yeah, a womb. And, uh, so, I mean, the, one of the biggest challenges was kind of breaking out of that confine and then being curled into the world. And once we did Molly's house, Molly Shannon's house, because that was a few days, then we were out on the road, like, we were just sort of out on the road, out on the streets, we were moving so fast. Like, suddenly we had half the movie to shoot, and, you know, and it was like location, 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 it was a lot of moving, so that was the pain. And, it was very stressful. That I mean, just so I think that I, and that was the most. That to me is always just the most horrifying part of low budget filmmaking is um, that when the actors feel that the time and you're trying to 
not let them feel it, that there's just a point at which they have to say, feel it, because the producers don't like this. Going, what's going on? You know, it, so I, that was painful, I mean, to not, I don't know, just to put that kind of pressure on actors to make me sick. Catherine, but we got through it. I was going to say, Catherine, from you, what was the shooting process like from your point of view? Did you feel that pressure? I mean, certainly you always wish you had more, uh, I, you know, I, 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 I always, you always wish you had more time, of course. But there were some, there were some scenes that I felt like we, you know, the, the bedroom scenes, I always think about the ones between the Paul and I, we always, it, it kind of worked though, in retrospect, like there was, there was always a finite amount of time, because we were in those, we were in the apartment, we knew that we, that Tamara knew she wanted it to be, um, to have that natural dark, right. like we were shooting night for night, 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 day, night not doing the thing where you lock the windows. And we had to have like a hard out at a certain time because it was in a real apartment building and um, uh, the neighbors and everything. And so we knew that we had a certain amount of time to get those, some of those really big scenes done. And so there, there's sometimes in that finite time, in that time, that kind of like rising, tension and pressure, there is something that happens when you can't just indulge that, it, that it is special, that is, that is kind of like, there's like a heightened holiness because you can't indulge and you can't just like overthink and you can't like, it doesn't always work, but it, it, I, it does sometimes, and I feel like it did in this, that there was something heightened in that like, Sometimes in that vibration, that is yeah. that can can really work. And that, that came across on the screen very effectively. Okay, okay let's give people in the audience a chance to ask some questions. Yes. Hi, um, I have a question for Tamara. Um, the idea of a baby, of kind of a ghost baby, or having a baby, is there in the movie, but um, I don't recall. I don't remember seeing a baby. I don't remember. We we've seen kids, right? But we haven't seen sound of a baby and baby related products or baby related objects. So I was um, going to ask if that was a deliberate choice. If yes, then what was the idea behind it? So I'm just going to very quickly summarize that circle and the other question, which is basically you're thinking in, if I, if I think that was my memory, that we didn't see much baby stuff or baby pictures of babies. Yeah, there's no babies, there's, there's children, children who perform it family functions and dinners and so she could have performed with the children. Um, there's the Halloween children. Pictures of babies. And there's what did you say? Pictures of babies in the waiting room. Yes, the pictures of babies in the waiting room. And uh, I mean it is the but there's parenting in the movie. There's like a I mean in a way Kaylee becomes a kind of baby. She becomes a she becomes a child <laughs> or one of their you know it sort of feels like that it becomes this kind of makeshift family. <coughs> But, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, yeah, they didn't have a baby. <laughs> but, I mean, if, you know, I mean, what would this baby scene be? Uh, other people with babies walking by and not feeling bad. I mean, as, and also, as I said, it wasn't, you know, and they're alienated from the world of babies. Um, but it's true, you know, they're, they're hanging in that office, in the doctor's office, as this strange, <laughs> You know, like you know, gold at the end of the pot of whatever rainbow. Oh, gold at the end of the yes, rainbow. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, um, pile of carrots <laughs> at the end of the stick. Something this, you know, a dream that's out there, but it's never, um, you know, it never gets there. Um, so I, you know, it's inherent in the story. And also, like, sort of the way we said, like at one point during the shooting of the movie, Paul Giamatti stopped and said, this isn't about the baby. This is waiting for Godot. <laughs> and I knew what he meant. Yeah. Another question, yes. Can you tell me what the symbolism of the weather is? The symbolism of the weather, is there any? Yeah.
older at the end, the very young one, the, the, the foster mom that lived right on the gate. Mm -hmm. Was that? Tell us about the weather. The weather. Um, well, I mean, it really is a year, I guess, because there's from Halloween to Halloween, there's like fall. Um, it's, well, the weather was there in, in terms of production. I mean, I was so, uh, I really wanted to shoot the movie in fall, 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 like true exploding fall. And just for some reason, I always ended up shooting movies in March. And March is always kind of an interesting time to shoot a movie because it, it, you can kind of turn March into many different things. You can turn March into fall, you can turn March into dead of winter, you can sort of work a little spring in there. I, it's kind of, um, but anyway, it was, uh, yeah, rain. That was, uh, the, well, I, you know, the scene where uh, Kaylee comes into the car, that rain scene, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, there's not. There's like two rain scenes. That rain, that rain scene we invented, and I wrote it in. And I remember wanting the feeling of them having to be stuck in the car and have this intense, you know, conversation about her crying and their feeling and just being the way that the weather brought them into that icky, squished together, damp feeling inside of that car for that scene where she's crying and saying that and you know so I it was about I don't know it was something about if it's out if it's like that out there and also everything's starting to fall apart this whole operation that they set up it seems like oh this could really be working and it really starts you know the gods are not happy <laughs> and, and then it's starting to crack and fall apart her their relationship starts being strained. Uh, it's the first time there's anything resembling hostility between, you know, the way that Catherine's character treats Kaylee in the, the waiting room. Um, it's the beginning of it sort of all falling apart. So I mean, that's one example of using weather to kind of heighten that narrative thing. Um, we, changed, we ran around with a lot of leaves. We had all these bags of leaves because, you know, she was supposed to be kind of the beginning of school. So, you know, we had we were just running around creating leaves, and then there was then there was this crazy snowstorm, and it all kind of worked out. But I really love weather. I mean, simply, I mean, uh, like real weather is very nice to be shooting with real wind. And I mean, we did, the last time I made a movie, I remember there was this great scene. I mean, not that it was a great scene because I'm a genius, but it was a scene with uh, Bill Seymour and Laura Lee and they're having a fight outside of the nursing home. And I just, they, and it's a very intense argument. And there was just this wind that just whipped through. And it's in the movie. And it's like Bill's hair blowing and then arguing. And it just was like this gift from the gods who were helping underline everything. It's a perfect moment. So anyway, weather can really be a can also be around the way a lot of drama with the Halloween parade and then with the kids and the, there was a rain nightmare and we did that. But anyway, uh, uh, that uh, helps. Uh, I'm sure it does. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, perhaps one last question. Was there anyone got one? Yes, there's a hand waving in the back. Yes. Me? Yes, yes. me. Thank you. 
is it sort of during the flashback where you guys go and wait for the wait for the um, birth mother that never shows up? Um, and there it was a it was a very long dialogue scene, and it was it was really hard to do. It was the time was a crunch. I just there were a lot of things against it. The location wasn't where I, I didn't see the locations of the day we showed up. It was a mess. We really, it was, we really were struggling finding the right locations for a couple of scenes. Um, that was a really hard part of the making of the movie, I have to say, like nailing locations. Um, uh, anyway, so so uh, I mean that's something that I ended up lifting. Did I lift it because I didn't think that we could execute it as well as we might have done had we had more time, for instance? I think I would have lifted it anyway. Uh, for other reasons, just for narrative reasons, that I felt like it was too much of a scene and a flashback, kind of. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some things that I lifted out of the movie that I love, a, a, a great scene with Catherine, uh, but it was for the bigger whole, that thing that you learn, you're supposed to learn, <laughs> about killing your darlings, and uh, for the bigger cause of the rhythm of the film. Well, I think we can all agree that everything we did manage to get into the movie was marvelous. We've all had a terrific evening. And thank you all so much.